Okay guys, go ahead and get out your English notebooks and open to a clean page. Um, today's notes, today we're going to learn, we're gonna keep talking about pronouns and today we're going to talk about possessive pronouns. So at the top of your clean page, you need to write possessive pronouns and then today's date. Please make sure that you are spelling possessive right. When we were talking about possessive nouns, I had a lot of people writing passive nouns. Passive nouns are not a thing. Passive is not a word. So make sure you are writing possessive pronouns. So first of all, just like a possessive noun, possessive pronouns show ownership. So it means that pronoun or that noun that the pronoun is taking the place of owns or has something. Possessive pronouns take the place of possessive nouns in a sentence. So instead of using a possessive noun, you would use a possessive pronoun. Possessive pronouns never have apostrophes. So we know possessive nouns have an apostrophe. Now sometimes it's apostrophe S. If it's a plural possessive noun, it's S apostrophe. But possessive pronouns never have apostrophes. Possessive pronouns are my, your, his, hers, its, it, no apostrophe s, means it belongs to it, our, and their. So my means it belongs to me, your means it belongs to you, his means it belongs to him, hers means it belongs to her, it's, take note, there is no apostrophe when you are using it as, and when you're using it's as a possessive noun. It's means it belongs to it, our means it belongs to us, and their means it belongs to them. So, one more note about this. Possessive, oops, not nouns, pronouns, must match the possessive noun. So, what that means, oh, sorry, possessive noun in both number, which means plural, or singular and gender. Is it male or female? So what that means, and I'm going to give you an example of each um, of each case. So. If I were to say the bag belonging to Miss Follis, as in me, I'm trying not to use any pronouns here, I would say my bag. My 
matches Miss Follis, which is my name. If I said the bag or bags belonging to, and let's see, I'm going to pick one of you out. Oh my gosh, it's been so long since you've been here, I forgot numbers. Number 10 is Carly. The bag belonging to you, Carly, or the bags belonging to the rest of you, the whole class, whether you're telling just one person that you're talking to or a group of people that you're talking to, would be your bag. Because remember, your is the same whether it is singular or plural. You and your do not change forms whether you're talking to one person or you're talking to a group of people. Now, um, let's see. I'm going to erase because I don't have enough room. So, make sure you have written that. The bag belonging to Miss Follis is my bag. The bags belonging to Carly or the class are your bag or your bags. Now I'm going to erase this and I'm going to keep going because I need more room. I probably should have erased this and moved that up, but oh well, hindsight is 2020. So I'm going to erase these. You should have them written if you need to go back because I went too fast. Go ahead. Now. The bag belonging to Eli, we have one boy named Eli becomes his bag, and the bag belonging to Kit, we have one girl becomes her bag. Now, the bag belonging to, we'll say the school, because maybe you borrowed a bag from the school. The school is one object, so it would become it bag. Remember, this it's does not have an apostrophe. We will talk about that next week. We will talk about when to and when to not use an apostrophe with it's and again yours, your, and their. Um, and I think one other, but I can't remember which one. Else. So there we go. So his bag means it belongs to Eli, that's one boy. Her bag means it belongs to Kit, which is one girl. It's bag means it belongs to one object, the school. Now, we already talked about how your would be the same, whether you are talking to one person or to a whole group of people, your does not change. But, now, I'm going to say, the bags, because I'm talking about more than one person, so I'm talking about more than one bag, the bags belonging to the Follis family, which means a group of people that I am included in, because I am part of the Follis family, means our bags, because we're talking about more than one person, but I belong to it, so I would say our. Now, the bags belonging to, hmm, the, I don't want to use one of your last names because then that means that I have to, that you're included in it. So I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick a stick and I'm whoever had that number last year, Will Bradley stick. Well, it's Eli's, but that was Will's number last year. 
belonging to the Bradley family. I'm talking about a group of people. I am not in it. You are not in it. It is a completely separate group. Is their bags because I'm talking about more than one person. That does not include me or you, the people that I'm talking to. So those are examples of possessive nouns. Remember, we have my, your, his, hers, its, our, and their, which we use in different cases depending on who we are talking to or about. And remember, there are no apostrophes in any of these uh, possessive pronouns. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do what we did um, we did this a, while, a little while ago. I think when we were talking about uh, when we were talking about subject, object, and reflexive pronouns. So what we're going to do is you still have notes to take, but we're going to pause on the note taking. You're going to open up your packet for today to the guided practice, and we're going to go ahead and do the guided practice on possessive pronouns. So the side that says page 115 on the bottom. And then we'll take some more notes, and then we will work on the back, or page 116. So right now, go ahead, get out your packet for today, and open up to the guided practice, and we're going to do that together. We're going to do that on possessive pronouns right now, just page 115. Make sure you have all of this written down first, and remember, you should have not erased. You should have everything um, from the bag belonging to Ms. Follis to the bag belonging to um, Carly or the whole class, to the bag belonging to Eli, to the bag belonging to Kit, and the bag belonging to the school. So pause this video if you need a little more time. If not, make sure you have your guide to practice out and we'll do the front page together. Then we'll take some more notes and then we'll do the back page together. Okay, so now we're gonna do the guided practice that is all about possessive pronouns. So what we're going to do is first, let's read the box at the top. Now I don't have it here, but you have it right in front of you. So read it in your head while I read out loud. A possessive pronoun takes the place of a possessive noun. It shows who or what owns something. Some possessive pronouns are used before nouns. My, your, his, her, its, our, your, and their. So the reason it said that sentence is every, every one of these possessive pronouns that we've just been talking about has to come before a noun. It has to come before the noun that shows what they own. So like I said, um, Kit's bag became her bag. Well, we had to say her and then we had to say what she owned. She owned the bag. So all of these, what we're going to do is we are going to rewrite the underlying parts of the sentence using possessive pronouns and nouns. Now I meant to do this on your sheet, but I forgot, um, because some of them have the uh, who owns it and what they own underlined, some of them don't. So I went through and I underlined the person who or the thing that owns it and what they own, because we wanna write the, pro the possessive pronoun and what they have, so that we can see that these possessive pronouns that we've just been talking about always come before a noun that shows what they own. So number one, Adelina's father works on a boat and the grandfather of Adelina does too. So we know that the noun is Adelina. The person who owns something is Adelina. Adelina is one girl. So we know we have to use the possessive pronoun her. Now we need to show what she owns or has. Well, it says she has a grandfather. So, a better way to say this sentence would be, Adelina's father works on a boat and her grandfather does too. You can see that actually sounds better. Sometimes it sounds a lot better to use pronouns than it does nouns. Now, number two, the houses in Adelina's village are small. Well, again, we have Adelina who owns something who is one girl. So, we will replace that with her and she has a village. So instead we would say the houses in Adelina's village are small. Now number three, the village is busy and the village's visitors come from all over the world. Well, the thing that is doing the owning is the village, 
the village is one thing. We're only talking about one village. Otherwise, we would have S apostrophe. So we're only talking about one village. A village is neither a boy nor a girl. So instead of saying his or her, we would say it's, it has visitors. So we are saying the village is busy and its visitors come from all over the world. Remember, it's is what you use when you have one object or one, uh, like maybe an animal, where they don't have a gender or you don't know their gender if it's an animal. And it does, it's not you, it's not me, it's not, we don't know if it's a boy or a girl or it's not a boy or a girl. And we're only talking about one, we use it's. Number four, her family's job is to take people to see the whales. Well, her family is what has or owns something. Um, her family is more than one person that I or you are not included in. So we would change her families to there because we're talking about more than one person that I am not a part of and you are not a part of. And they have a job. So their job is to take people to see the whales. Now number five. The whales come to the village to have the whales babies. Well, we have the whales. The whales are an animal that we don't necessarily know the gender of, except we would know that they were girls. But also, we see that it has S apostrophe, which means that we're talking about more than one whale. So we're talking about more than one of a group that does not include me or you. So we would use there, and what they have is babies. So the whales come to the village to have their babies. Number six, Adelina's grandfather's stories are fascinating and the grandfather's job is two. So we have the grandfather that has a job. Grandfathers are boys. We're only talking about one grandfather. So we would use his. He has a job. So we are going to say Adelina's grandfather's stories are fascinating. And his job is two. Number seven, if you go to Adelina's village, be sure to bring the camera that belongs to you. So we see belongs to you means you have it. Whether we're talking about you as in just one of you or you as in the whole group, no matter what, the pronoun for that shows that you or a group of people that, are, that you are in own something is your and what you have is a camera. So we would say, if you go to Adelina's village, be sure to bring your camera. Remember, your does not change whether you're talking to just one person or you're talking to a group of people. So I might be talking about a whole group of people that own a camera. I might be talking to a whole group of people. Don't forget your cameras. Or I could be talking just to one person. Number eight. Robert learned about La Laguna from Robert's friend, Melissa. Well, Robert owns something. Robert is usually a boy's name. There's only one boy in this sentence. So instead of Robert's, we would say his, and he has a friend. So we would say Robert learned about La Laguna from Robert's friend, Melissa. Now, number nine. Robert and I went there for the vacation we had last winter. Well, the vacation we had, we see that we have or had this vacation. So anytime we're replacing a group that includes us and we're trying to so show possession, we would say our. That means we are in, I am in the group that they are talking about. What we have or had was a vacation. So we would say, Robert and I went there for our vacation last winter. Last one, number 10. I took a lot of pictures for the photo album that belongs to me. Well, I know belongs to me means it's mine. I am the one who owns it. So whenever I'm trying to say that I am the one who owns it, I would say mine. I know that I have a photo album. So this sentence would become, I took a lot of photos, a lot of pictures for my photo album. 
Okay, so that is the guided practice on uh, possessive pronouns, just the regular possessive pronouns. Um, however, I need you to go back to your English notebook because now we are going to talk about another type of possessive pronoun. So put your guided practice to the side because we will pull it out in just a little bit again. Um, and then get your, uh, bring your English book notebook, it should be out, but bring it forward and we're going to continue um, adding some notes to today's lesson. Okay, so we just did the, um, the guided practice on possessive pronouns together. Now we're gonna talk about another type of possessive pronoun. So up until this point, the possessive pronoun always came before a noun. Um, my bag, your bag, his bag, her bag, its bag, our bag, their bag. It always came before that noun, bag, or any other noun. Now, there's another type of possessive pronoun that does not have to come before a noun. And these are called stand alone possessive pronouns. Now, stand alone, we can see, well, if somebody is standing alone, that means they're all by themselves. They're not with anybody else. So standalone possessive pronouns are not used right before a noun. So unlike the pronouns we just talked about, they don't need a noun to come after them. Most stand alone possessive pronouns are formed or made by adding the letter S to the possessive pronouns that come before a noun. So what that means is most of these standalone possessive pronouns are just formed by adding an S to the pronouns we just talked about before we did that guided practice. These ones are yours, let's see, yours, hers, our, ours, or theirs. So, these are the ones that are formed just by adding an S. Oh, wait. Hold on. Wait, I'm confused. I just confused myself. I'm sorry. Okay, yes, that's what it is. Okay. Yours, you just add S to the end of your. Your handbag means, becomes, that, or your bag becomes, that bag is yours. Her bag becomes, that bag is hers. Our bag becomes, that bag is ours. Their bag becomes, that bag is theirs. So do you see the difference? That, uh, their bag, you don't have to say, that is their bag. You can say, that bag is theirs. You still have to have the noun somewhere in the sentence, what belongs to them. It just doesn't have to be right after the noun, uh, right after the pronoun, and we'll talk more about that later. Now, his, this is the word his, not something else that looks, his and its stay the same. So, just like I could say his bag, I could say that bag is his or its bag, that bag is its. You don't have to change those to make them a standalone pronoun. They can work either way. 
mine changes completely from mine. So my bag would become that bag is mine. So remember, to make these standalone pronouns, all you have to do is add S to your, her, our, or their. His and its stay the same, and mine changes completely from mine. So an example of each one. I'm going to erase this, and I am going to come up with an example for each one. So you don't erase. But I need the room, and I like to keep them all up and not have to erase again. So I'm going to um, make them, I'm going to erase and write it in their place. I'm going to leave that top uh, piece so that you know exactly what we're talking about. But you're just adding this beneath what you've already written. You're not erasing what you wrote and rewriting. So examples of each one. Instead of her bag, I'm sorry, instead of my bag, I would say, you need to write these examples. That bag is mine. So instead of my bag, I have that bag is mine. Instead of that is my bag, I'm saying that bag is mine. Now, instead of, instead of saying that is your bag, I can say that bag is yours. It's the bag that belongs to you, it is yours. Now I could say, that bag, remember, his does not change. So I could say, that is his bag, or I could say, that bag is his. I could say, that bag is hers. So instead of saying, that is her bag, I'm saying, that bag is hers. Now the last one, for the singular, is that bag is is its. So instead of saying that is its bag, I can say that bag is its. Now these are all these singular forms, except you know that yours can be either singular or plural. You just have to look at the rest of the sentence. Now let's look at the plural pronouns. Instead of saying that is our bag, I would say that bag is ours. And instead of saying that is their bag, I would say that bag is theirs. So you can see the difference. Regular possessive pronouns, the noun comes after it, but uh, standalone pronouns, the pronoun, I mean the noun comes somewhere earlier. What they own comes earlier in the sentence with standalone pronouns, possessive pronouns. With regular possessive pronouns, the thing that they own comes after the pronoun. So now what I want you to do is get that packet back out. We've already done the front, so you're going to turn to the back, and we are going to do the uh, standalone possessive pronoun guided practice together. So go ahead and do that. Put your English notebook to the side, and let's do, the, uh, let's do this last guided practice page together. Okay, so now we just took some notes on standalone pronouns, which do not have to be followed by a noun that the, um, that the pronoun owns, like the first guided practice. So now turn to the back of what we just worked on, and now we are going to complete page 116 together. It says 116 down at the bottom. So now we're going to complete this, uh, this together, but this time we're only going to be using standalone pronouns. So let's read the box at the top before we begin. Some possessive pronouns can stand alone, like mine, yours, his, hers, its, ours, and theirs. So we are only going to be using standalone pronouns here. That means they will not be followed by a noun showing what they own. The thing that they own will, um, will appear earlier in the sentence. So the directions for this says, in each sentence, replace the underlined incorrect possessive pronoun with the correct one on the line provided. So you have your list at the top and in your notes of standalone pronouns. 
There are only certain ones we can use. If it belongs to me, that means it's mine. If it belongs to you, whether I'm talking to just one of you or the whole group, it is yours. If it belongs to him, it is his. If it belongs to her, it is hers. If it belongs to it, it is it. If it belongs to all of us, it is ours. And is if it belongs to them over there, it's theirs. So let's see. And remember, answer this question out loud. Do possessive pronouns ever have apostrophes? No, they do not. Possessive nouns have, pron have apostrophes. Possessive pronouns do not. Otherwise, you're going to be looking, it's going to be a contraction. Number one, that is your boat, but this is mine. Well, we know when we're talking about something that belongs to me, it is not mine, it is mine. That is your boat, but this one is mine. Number two, yours is the smaller life, ve life vest, the blue one. Well, that sounds right, but again, this has an apostrophe. Do possessive pronouns ever have apostrophes? No. So, it is not your apostrophe S, it is just yours. Remember, yours is at the beginning of the sentence, so make sure that your Y is capitalized. Number three, I don't have my own, but my brother lets me use he's. If we're using a pronoun uh, that belongs to one boy, it is not he's. It is his. And remember, his is the same whether you are using it before the noun that it owns or whether you are using it as a standalone pronoun. Number four, you have your oars. Where are mine? Well, if it belongs to me, if they belong to me, then they are mine. My oars becomes the oars that are mine. Number five, I wanted to ask Mercedes if I could use hers, but she wasn't at home. That's like number two. It sounds right, but possessive pronouns do not have apostrophes. So instead of being her apostrophe S, it is just hers. That is one where we add an S to the end of the possessive pronoun to make it a standalone. Number six, we are off and the whole day is our. Well, if it belongs to all of us, it is not our. It is, it is our day, but the day is ours. That's another one, like hers, where you add an S to the end of the regular possessive pronoun to make it standalone. <clears throat> Number seven, Paco and Pepe say this beach is theirs, but it is not. Well, if it belongs to them, it is not their beach. It is the beach that belongs to, or the beach of theirs. It is, the beach is theirs, but it's not. Paco and Pepe say this beach is theirs, but it's not. <clears throat> Number eight, I forgot my lunch, so will you share your? Well, your is one where if you're making it standalone, you add S. So, it becomes yours. I forgot my lunch, so will you share yours? Instead of me saying, will you share your lunch? I'm saying, will you share yours? Because we already know we're talking about a lunch. Number nine, is that cool or hers? Sounds right, but remember, no apostrophes. So it should be, is that cool or hers with no apostrophe. Number 10, the fishing shack on the right is he's. Well, remember, if we are using a plural, I mean, a possessive pronoun, it is not he's, it is his. The fishing shack on the right is his. Number 11. Should we go to his fishing shack or your? Well, again, that's another one where we add an S to make it stand alone. Should we go to his fishing shack or yours? Number 12. That taco box is not our. Our, like your, if you want to make it stand alone, you add an S. That taco box is not ours. Number 13, its handle is broken. That one sounds right, but possessive pronouns, say it with me, do not have apostrophes. So instead of it apostrophe S, it is just its. That pronoun is at the beginning of the sentence, so make sure you capitalized it over here. Its handle is broken. 
Number 14, that pretty hat is my. Well, my is the one that changes completely if you want to make it stand alone because it becomes mine. That pretty hat is mine. Last one for the guided practice, number 15, those shoes are hers. Sounds right, but remember, no apostrophe. So instead of her apostrophe S, it's just hers. Those shoes are hers. Okay, so that's it for the notes and the guided practice. Make sure, please tear out the guided practice. I do not want it back. Tear it out, keep it, put it to the side, use it to help you study for your quiz on Friday. Um, uh, your comprehension, vocabulary, and uh, English, or your grammar, writing, whatever quiz. Um, use that. You can put it to the side. I do not want it back. Now that we're done with the guided practice, go ahead and flip over to the independent practice. On the front, you are going to be working with possessive pronouns that do require a noun that shows what they own. So instead of the mere, the, uh, so the directions say um, that you need to replace each underlined word or group of words with a possessive pronoun. Then rewrite the sentence on the line provided. Refer to the list in the castle to help you. So here's all of your um, possessive pronouns. So I'll help you. Number one says, the mice, you can't really see it, sorry. The mice help sew Cinderella's dress. Well, we're gonna replace Cinderella with a pronoun. So the mice help sew her dress. So you need to choose the correct possessive pronouns. There might be some here. Let's see, number seven through 12. Now read each, number seven through 12. That's what you're gonna do for number one through six, what I just said with Cinderella. Now for number seven through 12, you're going to read each sentence and replace the possessive pronoun with the correct word or group of words. That means you figure out what it means. So Cinderella needs her help. Whose help? Remember, pay attention because her only shows one girl. So you can't say Cinderella needs grandpa's help or Cinderella needs the class's help you have to figure out who her is same with number eight its bricks stand firm when the wolf blows well who, what is it referring to so numbers one through six you're replacing the group of words or the word or group of words with a pronoun number seven through twelve you're replacing the pronoun with a noun that still works so you have to pay attention if it says her you have to say one girl's name you can think of the fairy tales and use what it actually is. For number seven, I'll help you. Cinderella needs her help. Well, we know that Cinderella needed the fairy godmother's help. So Cinderella needs the fairy godmother's help is how you would do that. Okay, um, if you're not sure of which um, fairy tale it's referring to, just reach out to me or you can even Google it. Which fairy tale talks about somebody's nose who grows when they lie? And then you can figure it out that way. On the back, you're working with standalone pronouns. So what you're doing is you are looking at the sentence and then on the line you're saying who it belongs to using the correct standalone pronoun. So number one says, I bought a new video game. So that means it's mine. That video game is mine. Okay, if you have any questions about that, please reach out to me later today um, between one and five and I will help you out.